Today my talk is uh, going to deal with uh, fibroblast node factor 21. It's an emerging uh, molecule, an endocrine factor, that I want to try you to convince today that it is uh, highly relevant for uh, the control of metabolism. Uh, I also would like to provide a few data about uh, uh, some indications that it can be especially important in early development, in neonatal uh, life and in childhood. And uh, if my horrible cold today allow me, I want to try to convince you about it. Uh, a couple of years ago, the cover of the uh, Endocrine News, the journal of the American Endocrine Society, uh, talked about a hormone that holds promise for treating a metabolic triple threat. What was this triple threat? It was diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. And it highlighted the fact that there was a hormone that had appeared in the endocrinology scenario recently that appears to play a very relevant role in the control of these uh, uh, alterations. And this hormone is uh, FGF21, fibroblast growth factor 21. What is FGF21? FGF21 is a member of the fibroblast growth factor family. But it doesn't mean neither that fibroblasts were the target uh, of this uh, uh, molecule, nor that it was a growth factor. Most of the members of this uh, family of molecules effectively uh, have uh, autocrine and paracrine functions, regulate cell division, differentiation, development, angiogenesis. They behave as growth factors. But there's a small subfamily that even from a structural point of view and later after experimentation, uh, was evident that they were not autocrine molecules, but they were real endocrine factors because they were able, once secreted, to go through the uh, circulation and to affect uh, at distance uh, several organs and targets. So in fact, the members of this family act as hormones. Uh, these three member, among these three members, FGF21 is, uh, was traditionally considered to be released by the liver. And the very important property in the mechanisms of FGF21 to act is that uh, uh, in order to interact with a cell surface and provide biological effects, it requires receptors, evidently. But in this case, differently from the other fibroblast growth factors, these receptors are composed of two molecules. One fibroblast growth factor receptor, the same that any fibroblast growth factor could use, and another accessory protein called beta cluto, which is absolutely required for the FGF21 to have its effect. In other words, in order that a cell, a tissue, was a target of FGF21 effects, it should have in its surface not only a fibroblast growth factor receptor, but also this beta caloto molecule. This is relevant for something we're going to talk about later on. The importance of FGF21 as a molecule relevant for metabolism was discovered around 10 years ago by a laboratory in the Lilly Company uh, in the search of anti-diabetic molecules. And basically what the laboratory found was that FGF21 was a natural molecule present in our blood that in experimental models had a strong effect promoting, uh, ameliorating glycemia and uh, uh, hyperlipidemia. These uh, results were very rapidly replicated in uh, rodent models and it was shown that in different models of obesity and type 2 diabetes in mice, FGF21 lowered uh, hyperglycemia ameliorated hepatic steatosis and insulin resistance. And not only that, while well, it was also replicated in not human primates, and uh, it was also evident that the effect of FGF21 not only uh, uh, involved uh, uh, amelioration of insulin resistance and glycemic profile, but it also had an impact on obesity. In experimental models of uh, obesity in rodents, it was found, as you can see here, that, oops, that if the uh, uh, animal uh, rodents, obese rodents, were treated 
with FGF21, they experience a reduction uh, in dose dependent reduction in the body weight. Uh, and very interestingly, it was found, as you can see in the, uh, in the right panel on the top, that there was no change at all in food intake. So FGF21 did not reduce body weight by reducing food intake. What FGF21 did, as you can see in the bottom panels, was promoting energy expenditure. So the effect of FGF21 against obesity was based on the induction of energy expenditure. More recently, uh, we and others have found what's the physiological basis for this effect, and it was because FGF21 is a strong promoter of brown adipose tissue activity, and as well as uh, it bears the capacity of uh, promoting transformation of the white to brown adipose tissue, the process called browning. This effect uh, underlies an important part of FGF21 effects on energy expenditure, and the, the, this discovery has overlapped uh, uh, in the, with the recent recognition of brown adipose tissue relevance in humans. Uh, uh, if everything relied on rodent models, we can say, yes, perhaps FGF21 is doing that, but this is because the rodents, they have active brown adipose tissue. What's the meaning for that in humans? As you, most of you probably know, in the recent years, there has been a complete a uh, change in our view of how relevant brown adipose tissue as a site of energy expenditure is in humans. These uh, three uh, independent simultaneous papers in New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago highlighted it. And thanks to the PET scan uh, technology, we can now uh, identify brown adipose tissue activity. It is basically in these black regions that you can find. It is uh, strong uh, in the supraclavicular region in adult humans and uh, uh, systematically all researchers are finding that the activity of brown adipose tissue is strongly impaired when you analyze obese individuals consistent with an impairment in energy expenditure. Uh, FGF21 shares with insulin some metabolic effects like the promotion of glucose uptake in white and brown adipose tissue, the promotion of, uh, 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 of, of other uh, pathways, but there are other uh, aspects of, their, of its action that are unrelated to uh, insulin. For instance, uh, insulin targets skeletal muscle. Uh, FGF21 does not appear to have a skeletal muscle as a relevant target. Uh, insulin uh, tend to increase lipogenesis in the liver. FGF21 does not, it does the opposite. So uh, FGF21 is not an insulinomimetic. FGF21 is a molecule with a differential profile of biological action and sharing some aspects such as favoring lowering of glucose thanks to promotion of glucose uptake with insulin. If we have to summarize a little bit the state of the art of what we know as targets of FGF21 today, we can find here in the left of the, of, of, of the slide the first things I mentioned, it promotes thermogenic activation, it promotes glucose uptake and oxidation, it promotes the browning. All these are these healthy effects for metabolism. More recently, it has been found that it stimulates adiponectin secretion. This is very important as well, because you know that adiponectin is one of these healthy adipokines. Adiponectin is a promoter of insulin sensitivity. And more recently, two other targets of FGF21 have been found. It has been found that FGF21 uh, uh, may act directly on the central nervous system. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. And some of the systemic effects of FGF21 perhaps are mediated by central effects. And in, it has also been found, in, we, we found us that in, in our laboratory recently, that the, the heart is a strong target of FGF21 and in this system, FGF21 is basically protective against hypertrophy. Uh, when we talked about brown adipose tissue, I would like to highlight, because it's going to be important for some slides to come, that uh, after liver, brown adipose tissue appears to be a potential site of FGF21 production. It is when the energy expenditure is promoted and uh, brown adipose tissue is active, we have uh, found, and I'm not going to be uh, 
make any boring description of the molecular mechanisms that, that had been clearly dissected, that uh, uh, the activation of brown adipose tissue made brown adipose tissue not only a target, but also a site of active release of FGF21. So the presence of FGF21 in blood cannot be systematically or exclusively attributed to liver release, but in some settings, brown adipose tissue can be a source. When FGM21 was discovered, it was obvious that uh, we could uh, think uh, if this is so relevant for obesity, if this is so relevant for type 2 diabetes, perhaps obese patients have low amounts, impaired levels of this hormone, and that explained these alterations. This was not the case. It was exactly opposite. All the measurements of serum FGF21 levels in human patients have been that it is positively associated with the BMI and insulin resistance. Here in this slide, you have some data we got in collaboration with Hemma Frubeck from, from the University of Pamplona. And as you can see, uh, normoglycemic uh, patients, even if normoglycemic, they have higher levels of FGF21 in blood. If in addition to this, they are intolerant to, ins uh, to glucose, or they have even over type 2 diabetes, the levels are even higher. So this is totally contradictory and has led to the uh, hypothesis, which is quite uh, clearly confirmed nowadays, that most possibly uh, the obesity and type 2 diabetes are conditions of FGF21 resistance. Here, for instance, you have uh, in this type of patients what happened about uh, gene expression in tissues. As you can see, systematically, FGF21 expression is higher in the liver of these uh, people. That fits very well how, with the high levels of FGF21, because prob most probably it is the liver that is producing more FGF21. But look here at adipose tissue about beta gluto. Remember that beta gluto was this co receptor essential for FGF21 effects, that it is clearly downregulated. We have plenty of evidences now that in obesity and type 2 diabetes and insulin uh, resistance, there's a reaction, an abnormal event that is a downregulation and impair abnormal low expression of this key component for the FGF21 signaling. Uh, the best candidate that we have for explaining that phenomenon is inflammatory signaling. As you know, in adipose tissue uh, from obese patients, there's a uh, moderate but significant inflammatory condition, and we could find that uh, in adipose cells, if you treat the cells with a, a cytokine typical of the inflammatory condition, like TNF-alpha, there's a strong repression in the expression of beta gluto. If you treat the cells with TNF-alpha and you reduce beta gluto, the FGF21-induced glucose uptake is strongly impaired. So it seems that this inflammatory condition leads to the tissues, to the targets of FGF21, a repression of their machinery of response, and that is what would promote this resistance. However, if the uh, patients are resistant, that means that we cannot use FGF21 as a pharmacological tool. This is not true. You can overcome this uh, reduction uh, in sensitivity if you provide pharmacological doses of FGF21. This has been in rodents that despite lower beta gluto levels, if you dose uh, the animal with uh, uh, FGF21 pharmacological levels, you can achieve a response. And due to that fact, many companies and drug uh, companies are now developing derivatives or molecules that mimic FGF21 action that are at different stages of development, trying to take advantage of the properties of FGF21 as a potential tool of treatment of uh, diabetes and perhaps obesity. Here you have the, on the only published to date data in a pilot study that demonstrated that FGF21 uh, treatment, while it's an, an analog in obese patients with type 2 diabetes uh, for one month uh, led to significant improvement in dyslipidemia, much more moderate in hyperglycemia. 
we don't know whether this is because that's it or because it was a too short a treatment. This has been totally confirmed by an independent study that is recently appearing in, in press. This is for adults. Let's say a few words about FGF21 in early development. What we observed could happen with development. What we observed in rodents was that FGF21 experienced a burst after the birth. In uh, rodents, uh, fetuses have almost no FGF21 in the fetal life. And just a few hours after the birth, the uh, animals uh, uh, achieve levels of FGF21 in blood similar or even higher than in plasma, well paralleled with the hepatic expression. So in a few hours from almost nothing to full adult levels in the neonate. What was switching on it? It was very clear, you don't allow the pups to suckle, there was no induction. It was the initiation of milk intake, what switches on FGF21 levels in blood. And what's any food or specific component. If you substitute milk by lipid infusion or a carbohydrate infusion to the stomach of the pups, it's lipids what causes the induction of FGF21. The schema is that uh, basically fatty acids from the neonate activate the FGF21 gene uh, in the liver thanks to a PPAR alpha receptor. This FGF21 is released to the blood of the neonate and the main effect of this brown is to activate the brown adipose tissue. As you know, after the birth, brown adipose tissue is very important to cope with the thermal stress experience with the passage from the warm intrauterine environment to the external cold environment. So this, uh, this uh, burst of FGF21 after the birth targets brown adipose tissue and activates energy expenditure and provision of heat in the neonate. This is a more pictorial aspect of this uh, f fact that we found. And uh, uh, we had the opportunity to check whether it happens as well in humans. And thanks to a collaboration with Lourdes Ibáñez, we could obtain these results here in which you can see this is a, a, a core blood. This is two days after the birth. These bar here are normal adult levels. It is exactly the same as in rodents. Two days after the birth, human neonates have achieved levels as high as adults. And these levels are even higher during the first year of life. So it appears that the induction of FGF21 is very important. For, for what is so important having high levels of FGF21 in blood in the first year of life, in the neonatal life? We don't know yet. We can claim that the brown adipose tissue, which is so important in the neonatal life, is a target from our experiments in, in rodents. But perhaps there are many other effects of FGF21 that are important. But for sure it happens for something. This adaptation to switch on this hormone in such a strong manner, for sure, has some role in neonatal metabolic adaptations. As I mentioned, brown adipose tissue is, is uh, quite relevant in, in in uh, adult, in, in neonates, not all, uh, and uh, I just wanted to mention some re recent technology that uh, was developed by uh, a research group in the United Kingdom and that we adapted. The brown adipose tissue in young kids is so relevant that you can in even detect it and measure it using a high sensitivity thermal imaging system. Uh, it's uh, uh, really astonishing, but see, if you look here, at the supraclavicular white area, which is the hottest area, uh, it is enough to place for five minutes your hand, or not your hand, but a kid's hand for sure, uh, on cold water to uh, be able to appreciate a strong effect of activation of brown adipose tissue in kids. So uh, perhaps that's gonna allow us a more deep investigation in children in which we are not gonna make for just basic research, uh, systematic PET scans, which is evidently not reasonable, but perhaps with this not invasive technique, we expect being able to advance in our uh, assessment of the role of FGF21 in brown adipose tissue activation in children. 
We have had also the opportunity to advance a little bit in understanding the system thanks to a collaboration <coughs> with, uh, with a research group in Prague, in the Czech Republic. This group had a unique collection of samples from human biopsies, sorry, for human autopsies uh, that allowed us to measure uh, gene expression in some tissues. This is an example for FGF21 expression in human neonates. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, the, the, uh, the FGF21. This is brown adipose tissue from two different sites. The fact that this is brown adipose tissue is evidenced by the presence of UCP1. And as you can see, FGF21 is strongly expressed in brown adipose tissue in neonates. This is the control of adult white adipose tissue in humans for which FGF20 expression is totally negligible. So it seems that, uh, as in rodents, brown adipose tissue is not only a target but a site of FGF21 uh, expression and possibly secretion. Uh, and sorry for this uh, ugly slide because this is very recent. This is an analysis of FGF21 expression in samples for the same collection of necropsies uh, of uh, neonates uh, these days after the birth that uh, died from different uh, uh, events and they were uh, for a while under enteral, parenteral or parenteral plus lipid uh, nutrition. As you can see, some tendency to increase uh, FGF21 expression in the liver uh, as uh, uh, samples get from older uh, neonates appear, and perhaps some tendency that lipid presence is relevant to have high levels. But this is very preliminary. These studies are quite difficult to analyze, as you can understand, and we will see how, how everything goes on with these samples. And to finish it, I'm going to just show you a very few uh, data about uh, the new role of FGF21 in early development. The, uh, first, we found that FGF21 is present in, bre in breast milk. Uh, you have here um, data from milk in mouse and rats, in which the levels are the same in milk than in blood. Uh, the right is in humans. Humans, the levels are lower, but clearly significant, around one half what we have in plasma. We performed, have performed uh, tons of experiments to measure this and to see why uh, FGF21 has this uh, presence in milk. And this is the conclusion. Believe, believe me, if not, you have here the reference. What happened in lactation is that the mother increases FGF21 expression in the liver the lactating mother has very high levels of FGF21 in plasma, and this blood FGF21 is transferred to milk. The FGF21 that is transferred to the neonate is retained in the gut. It does not pass the circulation of the neonate. It's retained in the gut, and it interacts with the luminal surface of intestine. It's very unique of neonates. This receptor, beta-cloto, is absent in adult humans and in adult rodents. But during the neonatal period, this cell that's usually unresponsive to FGF21 becomes responsive thanks to the presence of beta-cloto. This FGF21 coming from milk interacts and interacts with the uh, intestine, uh, small intestine uh, 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 cell. What's the target and the consequence? Basically, it's a promoter of the intestinal enzyme maturation. It increases a lot lactase activity. It favors the, the absorption of lactose. And it's also an inducer of several of the incretin peptides produced by intestine, GLP-1 and GIP. The take-home messages, what they would be, First, that FGF21 constitutes a novel endocrine system with important actions in the control of energy metabolism, energy and expenditure, and that holds good promise for the treatment of metabolic diseases. The second, that FGF21 induction is a key process in the adaptation to neonatal life, especially for the induction of the brown fat activity. 
and the lipids from milk are responsible for the induction of neonatal FGF21. And last, that FGF21 is present in breast milk and has beneficial effects of intestine digestive maturation and in creatine secretion. And that's uh, all. We had a research group on this type of issues here in the University of Barcelona, not so far from here. This is my research group. These are uh, common collaborators, and this is our sponsors. Thank you very much for your attention.